We recently came up with 7 of the worst trades of the past 10 years. But now with the help of some of your guys suggestions in the comments from the other video, we've got 8 more terrible trades. This time, they're not in order, but let's get it started with Number 1, The Magic Trade Away Their Future Early on in his career on the Thunder, Serge Ibaka had some of the best years of his career. When he was a double digit scorer on nearly 60% shooting and getting 3.5 blocks a game for a couple of seasons. And then he'd develop his game and become more of a perimeter playing power forward, which led to him putting up 12 points, 2 blocks, and 7 rebounds a game in the 2015 and 16 season. And then on the other hand, we had the Orlando Magic, who hadn't been a good team for a while, and used their 2013 second overall pick to draft Victor Oladipo, who looked like a star back when he played for Indiana University. And he was working his way up into developing into a great player, that was averaging 16, 4, 4, and 2 steals a game through his first 3 years on the Magic. And for some reason, the Magic, who already had 4 big men in Aaron Gordon, Nikola Vucevic, Irsan Ilyasova, and Bismack Biombo, thought that it was a good idea to trade their future star, Ilyasova, and the recently picked Demontis Sabonis for Serge Ibaka. Bruh. They had the idea of playing three big men at a time to go against all the teams in the league playing small ball, and it failed terribly. It didn't make any sense back then, and it still doesn't make any sense now, looking back at how both teams ended up. Especially looking at how good Oladipo and Sabonis have become. But after the trade, both Ibaka and Oladipo would only play for their new teams for one season before getting traded. The only difference was the Magic got Terrence Ross in return for Ibaka, and the Thunder got Paul George in return for Oladipo and Sabonis. So in every aspect of the trade, it was a terrible move by the Magic and a great one for OKC. Number 2, Luka Doncic for Trey Young. This past draft, as most of you know, the Atlanta Hawks picked Luka Doncic 3rd overall and the Dallas Mavericks picked Trae Young 5th overall, and then traded each other with Atlanta getting an extra first round pick out of it. And it's still their rookie season, and we'd basically have to wait years from now to officially say this, but no one's got time for that. We can only base this off of what we've seen so far, but for now, at this point in time, the Hawks trading away Luka Doncic is looking like it'll go down as one of the worst draft day trades maybe ever. Trey was drawing Steph Curry comparisons in college, but since coming into the NBA, he's done a decent job of facilitating the Hawks offense, but has been a far too inconsistent shooter and still commits way too many turnovers. While on the other hand, Doncic has been the Mavs offense, has been their primary ball handler, and has recently been drawing comparisons to LeBron James, with people believing he has the chance to be the NBA's next huge star. He's got a huge basketball IQ, and even though he's not the best athlete, he's got the actual skill to be a superstar player. Some people say that Trey and Luka both fit best on their respective teams, but I mean both guys are now their team's primary ball handler, and even if you have to restructure your young team for a guy like Doncic, it's worth it. So based on how they're playing today and their projected potential, this is definitely going down as one of the worst trades for the Hawks. Number 3, the Pistons blow their team up. This might not have been a trade you were expecting because all the rest of these trades are more recent and with players still in the league, but this one was just about 10 years ago. So back in 2008, Chauncey Billups was still on the Pistons and they were still one of the best teams in the league. With Billups there, they made the NBA Finals twice and the Eastern Conference Finals and won at least 50 games the previous three years before he was traded. But two games into the 2008 and 9 season, they trade Chauncey Billups to the Nuggets for Allen Iverson's expiring contract. Because their GM Joe Dumars said six or seven years was an eternity to have a core group of guys together, so he jumped at the opportunity to give his team a new start. What was he possibly thinking here? He got rid of his 32 year old star player for cap space to get a head start at starting over? He didn't even trade him for draft picks or young players. I mean, maybe if the rebuild would have worked, it'd be different, but the team didn't win over 39 games for the next seven years and are still recovering from this. Iverson would only play 50 games that season before leaving the team, but Billups would still go on to have 3 more solid years for the Nuggets. And at least Denver would get something in return for him when they traded him to the Knicks in the Carmelo Anthony trade. Number 4, DeMarcus Cousins to the Pelicans. When this trade first went down, everyone was saying that it was a terrible trade for the Kings and they basically gave DeMarcus away. And I mean at the time you could see how it would look like that. Because in return for a guy that was the best center in the league, they got Tyreek Evans, Langston Galloway, a first round pick, and a rookie buddy healed who was the centerpiece of that trade for the Kings, but had just stayed all 4 years in college, and only came out and averaged 8 points a game as a rookie, so there weren't the best hopes for him. Which 
which is what led people to believing that the Kings made one of the worst trades possible for Cousins. Well, now you can just about say the exact opposite about it, and instead it was one of the worst trades of the last 10 years for the Pelicans. Because now Buddy Heald is on the verge of being a star NBA player, while Cousins only played 55 games for New Orleans, before getting injured, missing the playoffs, and then leaving as a free agent this past offseason. So basically out of that trade, they got nothing and lost out on their former 6th overall pick. And now Anthony Davis is going to leave the team because his team still isn't good enough after all these years. And this terrible trade only hurt his relationship with the Pelicans even more. And the better Buddy Hield continues to get, the worse this trade is going to look for him when you look back on it. Number 5, the Mavs go all out for Rondo. In his time in Boston, Rajon Rondo was really thought of as one of the top 2 or 3 point guards in the league. He had helped the Celtics to their championship in 2008, led the league in assists nearly every year, and was an elite on-ball defender. But after Ray Allen left the team and Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett did the same in 2013, it was only a matter of time before Rondo left too. And he did that in 2014 when the Mavericks were looking for another playmaker to team up with their core of Monte Ellis, Dirk Nowitzki, and Tyson Chandler to try and give them one more run at a championship. But that didn't happen because they traded away Jameer Nelson Jay Crowder, Brandon Wright, two draft picks, and a $13 million trade exception for Rondo, who not only never played the same again, but had horrible problems with the Mavs and Rick Carlisle, and was eventually flat out benched for the rest of the postseason two games into the playoffs because things got so bad, and he unsurprisingly left the team after the season. The Mavs thought they were getting the elite point guard they saw in Boston, but it turns out they gave up all those pieces of their team for a guy that did nothing but cause them problems. Number 6, the Nuggets make great moves and then blow it with terrible decisions. Back in the 2013 NBA Draft, Rudy Gobert wasn't too heavily scouted coming off of playing a few years in France. But during the draft combine, he did set the record at the time for the largest wingspan at 7 feet 8.5 inches and the tallest standing reach at 9 feet 7 inches. He might not have had the most impressive overall game back then, but with his size and athleticism, he had potential. But apparently the Denver Nuggets didn't think so, because they did pick him with the 27th overall pick, but then immediately traded him to the Jazz for a second round pick and cash considerations. Bruh. They pretty much straight up sold one of the best defensive players in the NBA. I mean, it all worked out for them because they ended up getting Nikola Jokic, but this is definitely a terrible trade looking back. But wait, it gets even worse for Denver, because on draft night, four years later, they had the 13th overall pick, and they used that to select Donovan Mitchell, but then they immediately traded him once again to the Utah Jazz for Trey Lyles and the 24th pick that night in Tyler Lydon. Bruh. Come on now, the Jazz must have some sort of blackmail situation over the Nuggets, or something. But again, I guess it's worked out for Denver because they're still the number one seed in the West right now. But with the player Mitchell's become, you gotta believe there's still some major regrets there. And number 7, the Dwight Howard Mega Trade. We don't see too many 4 team trades in the NBA too often. And it's even less often that we see a 4 team trade where nearly every team comes out of it a loser. And surprisingly with an unhappy superstar that was the best center in the league, the Magic by far came out of this trade the best. But let's look at this. The Lakers gave up Andrew Bynum and brought in Dwight Howard, who only stayed for one season. But let's be honest, Bynum's career was already over at this point, so either way they would have lost their starting center, but at least they got one year out of Dwight Howard. So you couldn't say the Lakers lost this trade. But that leads us to the 76ers, who gave up their all-star Andre Iguodala, a young Nikola Vucevic, and Mo Harkless for Jason Richardson and Andrew Bynum, who never played a game for them. And this was the first step of Philly becoming the worst team in the league for all those years. So this was a horrible trade for them. And then you have the Nuggets, who gave up the pick that became Dario Saric, Aaron Aflalo, and Al Harrington for Andre Iguodala. Which at the time, you could call that a win, because he led the team to 53 wins and a solid playoff run. But then he left in free agency after the season, so they gave up those three players for a single playoff run. And then you have the Magic, who got the Saric pick, Harrington, Nikola Vucevic, Harkless, and Aflalo, who turned into Evan Fournier. So they definitely won won the trade. But the major losers of this whole thing were the Nuggets and the 76ers who lost out on big pieces towards their future for superstars who weren't with the team for more than a year. And that's gonna wrap up the video. I got a lot more great ideas and great videos coming up so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to drop a like and comment and I'll catch you next video.